Hello there once again, my ever faithful internet audience. It is I, the Chicken Man, back at it again with another Apex Legends video. And in today's video, it is a highly requested one. Now, I know, I know that I've said I was going to make this in the past, but you know, they got a little caught up in some other things, but better late than never. I'm going to show you guys my settings. I'm going to show you guys a little bit of insight into how Chicken plays. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna load up into the firing range. Instead of waiting, we're gonna use editing magic to make it happen now. Okay, cool, we're here. So, usually on a day-to-day -day basis for the chicken man, before I even start playing games, I come into the firing range and I pick up a couple of guns and I shoot a couple of the bots just to try to get the shot warmed up a little bit. I know there's others out there that don't even bother doing this. They'll just run around in duos, trios, or you know, heaven forbid they go into ranked right off rip, not even remotely warmed up and that's, that's their warm up. I mean, that's cool if you guys do that and that, that works for you, that's fine. But for me, man, I can't, I cannot do that. So usually the guns that I pick up, usually pick up 99 and a 301. If I put any attachments on them, there's usually just gonna be the bottom tier attachments. It's just the common attachments, cause let's be real here, when you're landing off rip, you're not really gonna be finding all of the high stuff all of the time. I, I know luck, RNG, that's all involved in the epic battle royale that we're playing. But, uh, that's not always the case. Uh, I do put one to two times, though, because let's be real here. Who else uses one to two times scopes other than the chicken man? We'll just kind of move around, just take some shots, add some bots. N not really any big deal. Tr try to maintain a little bit of a range and trying our hardest to empty just one white mag into a guy to make sure that they're dead. Notice how I'm trying to stay at chest level, not really focusing on headshots too much, because all, all that really matters I know headshots are cool, fancy, and it's a way to, you know, get that double damage, that sick 1.5 to 2 times multiplier. But if you just hit more shots, put more damage on somebody, you don't always have to kill someone to win the fight. You just have to be able to do enough damage to take them out of the fight, make them retreat, make them have to heal, give yourself an opportunity to be able to do some epic gamer stuff. One of the major things that I'm doing here, whenever I'm doing anything to do with recoil control because a lot of people are asking or i can't even say they're asking i've had people accuse me of using zim I've had people accuse me of using strike pack I've had people accuse me of using all sorts of like weird things to control my recoil but friends it's not it's not anything magic i'm not using some crazy piece of technology i'm just using my thumb that that's it so look we're, we're, we're gonna do a little side by side comparison right here so i'm just gonna it's gonna ads right? i'm just gonna ads i'm just gonna hold r2 right See how it just kind of goes up in that way? I just, I'm not hitting the stick at all. This is just me holding R2. I'm just ADSing, holding R2, firing the gun, right? Now I'm actually going to try to manage the recoil. I'm just going to hold down on the right stick just a little bit, okay? I'm just, just a little. I'm not going to do anything crazy to overcompensate. I'm just going to, you know? It's a lot, it's a lot tighter right there. It's not that great on the, on the back and forth, the left to right, but at least it's not going straight up into the air. That's all you have to do, just slightly down on the right stick to help manage recoil. Same thing with the 99, you know, do without the, you know, without it, just go straight up like that. But we hold our stick down just a little bit. It's a lot more manageable. Sometimes I do overcompensate a little bit because the recoil, it is a little bit random every single time if you're not trying to manage it. It is a little random every single time. But try to do everything you can to mitigate that. Just hold down on the right stick. That's it. That's all you gotta do. It's nothing magic. No secret technology is being used here. It's just I'm literally my thumb, friends. This is just my thumb. So now that I've shared my warm-up routine, it's time for what you all came here for, my settings. We're gonna be going over every single setting. I'm not gonna leave out any details here, okay? So we're gonna go right into it. Settings, interact prompt style right here. We, we, I don't need all the information about the weapons in the world, I, you don't. After you've played this game for a little while, you kinda know what everything does, so compact. It's less stuff taking up your screen. Whatever you do, go over a weapon and it gives you this whole like bibliography. I, I don't need that. Button hits. I don't really need them on anymore. I know what all my abilities do and I know what buttons my abilities are tied to. So I don't need that taking up space on my screen. So I have that set to off. Next thing we have is the crosshair damage feedback. I like getting the X with a shield icon. I like having 
all of that little bit of information right there, knowing what armor the person is on when I'm doing the damage to them. That little bit of handy dandy information is a difference maker in fights. Knowing exactly how aggressive or how passive you should play, depending on what type of shield the enemy video gamer has. Damage numbers, I got both. It's just, it's combined for all damage. The little floating numbers for each event. I know some people, I can't even say some people, like literally every, everybody I know plays with both. It's just, honestly, it's just the best. Uh, ping opacity, I like having it faded because if it's in its full red, the full, the full ping itself will sometimes get in the way. Having it fade a little bit will let you see through the pings just in case there is a lot of stuff happening at that moment in time or your teammates are pinging like crazy. At least you'll be able to see a little bit more. <laughs> I say a little bit more, but it can still get a little confusing sometimes. Obituaries, obviously you want to know who's dying in the lobby. You want to see things that are happening because you're not always going to be hearing the gunshots. So it's nice to know when people go down, how they went down. Having that bit of information can help you when you are going into a fight. Seeing if there are, say you want a third party something, right? You hear two teams fighting. The only way you're going to know if people are going down is if you, well, I mean, you have a really trained ear or you have those obituaries on. Mini map rotation, I always like the map facing the same way and then my icon moving accordingly so. I don't like the whole thing. Like for some reason, having that in the corner, having everything rotate like crazy, it like gives me, it gives me like motion sickness. I don't, I don't know why. I don't, I, I don't know how to explain that. It's just how it is. Weapon auto cycle on empty. This has actually gotten me killed a lot of times back during season zero when I had it on. Because sometimes I don't want to swap to the next thing. If, I, if it has empty ammo, I, I'm aware of that. I get that i would just rather want to swap myself i want to swap manually auto sprint it's just one of those things where and the same thing with double tap sprint i it's not for me it's absolutely not for me i tried using it in the past when they did add it it's um uh, it's definitely not for me if you have like a broken controller maybe i could see this but more times often than not you're better off just with the default way to sprint incoming damage feedback got that set on 3 D. I like the three-dimensional arrow. It's very nice. Uh, taking damage closes death box menu. That is a that is a negatory. That is a no for me. I don't want to be kicked out of the death box whenever I'm trying to loot. Me getting that loot is way more important than the game automatically just throwing me out of the menu. Because if I'm trying to loot in a stressful situation where there's already a bunch of enemy gamers around me, Getting that armor swap or getting that ammo or getting that other gun out of the box is way better than me not being able to get it. Streamer mode. I have this set to off because it doesn't work like every single other streamer mode in existence. For some reason in Apex, it anonymizes everybody else's names in the lobby, right? In all the other Battle Royale games and all the other games that have a streamer mode, it anonymizes your name. If you don't want to be recognized, you don't have to. You turn on the streamer mode and it would make your name whatever character you're playing in some like randomized numbers or like player one, two, three, four. But here, oh, everybody knows. Oh, they see chicken? Oh yeah, that's chicken. Let's get them. <laughs> so it doesn't really do anything. It doesn't really help until they make changes. Uh, I'm just going to leave streamer mode off. Colorblind mode. I know there's a lot of other folks that like having the colorblind settings enabled just because they like the colors, not necessarily because they actually are colorblind. If you guys are, you know, if you are colorblind, I mean, there's yeah, nothing wrong with that. And if you enjoy alternate colors, I mean, that, that's fine too. But just for me, personally, eh, it's not for me. Uh, controller, here we go. This is what a lot of you guys really, really wanted to see. Button layout. It, it is default, my friends. It is 100% default. There's no changes. There is no buttons mapped to anything different. It is all default. My stick layout, that's default. Interact and reload button. I have these set to tap. I, I've been trying in the past, when I say a past, I mean like last year, to do the whole hold to reload or even hold to use. More times often than not, it just got me killed, especially in those very uh, high, high risk situations where there's a bunch of squads around you trying to open a door. You couldn't open it. You didn't hold long enough, so the door just stayed shut. And I was like, okay, well, this is stupid, so it's always tap for me. Crouch button is hold. I do a lot of little little subtle movements, a little, little bit of bee, bee hopping, as they say on the streets, or at least the, the, the nerf version of bee hopping that exists today. I still try to do that, so I, I always hold to crouch. My aiming button, that's hold. I, I don't know why anybody would use toggle. That's just not, I, I don't know, your brain's wired differently for <laughs> use toggle to aim. 
in this type of game right here. It's all very fast paced, taking the extra second to click click to get off a toggle. Eh. I don't, I don't, I don't see it, man. I don't see it. Uh, my default L2, R2 button dead zones is it, it's default because I, uh, I have a scuff controller. And I have the, uh, the, the the digital trigger, so they make little they make little clicky sounds. They're little, little clicky clicks. My menu cursor speed usually sits around here. I wish I had like an actual number or something to give to you guys, but you're just gonna have to try to eyeball it the best you can. My look sensitivity, I have it set to five for just the regular, and then four for the ADS. I have been working on making the ADS five. But right now, I'm, I'm still playing on 4 until I can dedicate a couple of days to just get used to 5-5. Five, five. But as of right now, it is 5-4. And I also have per optic settings. That's right. My one times is 4. My two times is 5. Three times is 5. 4 is also 5. 6 is 6. 8 is 5. And 10 is 6. Now, I know some people are like, Chicken, why is 8-5? Why is Man... With how my brain's wired, that's just that's just how it is. That's what I'm the most comfortable with. And honestly, like I don't really even use the eight times optic too often. Was the last time you guys ever saw me with an eight times optic? Never in a video. Probably on stream, just because I was desperate. But <laughs> I never really even used the eight times or the ten or six. So honestly, these are the only four that matter. I never use these three. Never use those optics. My response curve is classic. We get that classic respawn feel. I was messing around a lot with this in the beginning because I did play a tight I did play through Titanfall 2 and I liked the way that that game felt for the most part. I did customize the the frick out of my stuff there, so this is probably the closest way closest thing that gives me that similar Titanfall 2 feeling. My look dead zone is small. I don't really have much stick drift, but just having it minimized as much as possible helps me for that little bit of a better control going on right there. My movement dead zone is also small. I like making minute movements, so having it be smaller helps me move. Just those little, those little tiny movements I like make moving. Uh, inverted look, no. I, I don't know who play. I honestly have no idea who plays inverted. I, if you can, I mean, more power to you, but Jesus Christ. Vibration, have that set to off. And my advanced look controls, those are also off. I don't ever mess around with custom look controls. But one thing that you guys need to do is enable it every once in a while. I, I don't know how it happened, but I remember there was a glitch one time that even though the advanced look controls were off, they were still technically on, and it had my target compensation turned off, so I had no aim assist. I played a week without aim assist, and like I was still getting kills, but I wasn't doing as good as I you was usually doing. I was like, man, what's, what's happening? Because of that glitch. So just make sure to come in here, refresh that every once in a while, and then turn it back off. Just... Just letting you guys know. I, I don't know if that glitch ever happens anymore, but that could be the explanation of why some of you guys are having a hard time in the aiming department. I know I've experienced that in the past, so just a little little FYI to you guys. My video settings, my brightness is set right up there. I mean, you know, you guys can eyeball it. 106 is my field of view. It used to be 110, but I don't know. I just kind of kept it on 106 because way back in the day, Bloodhound going into sicko mode with Bloodhound, it increased your FOV and it would increase it past what the what the limit was at the time. It would cause uh, your console to crash sometimes. It would cut, make the game crash sometimes if there was too many things going on the screen and you had too high of an FOV. So, I don't know. I've just kept it on 106. My sprint view shake had that set to minimal. I don't need to be shaking all crazy like like to try to keep focus on things that are in front of me. Audio got my master effect, sound effects, and dialogue all set to 100%. And I don't listen to music. I don't. Voice chat is disabled, and then come the converting incoming voice to chat text. I have that disabled as well. Like it, it is what it is. But that's it, friends. That's all of my settings. I feel like I explained most of the stuff. Maybe I left some things out. I am pretty scatterbrained. If you have any questions, friends, on why I have things a specific way and I left that out, please feel free to ask down in the comment section below. I'll try to answer all of your questions on stuff like this or maybe even make another video talking about specific things. Just know, friends, that my settings, what I use, they work for me. They're the best settings for me. They're not necessarily gonna be the best settings for you. Now, you can take it as like a little bit of a baseline, you can work around them, but what works for me isn't necessarily gonna work for you as well. I'm just trying to have a little bit of uh, expectation management here, guys. I don't want you guys thinking that if you input chicken settings, 
you're going to magically become a KD god of like 10.9 permanently. That's just not, it's not how it works. Because at the end of the day, the best way to get better at Apex Legends is to play Apex Legends. With all that being said, I think it's time we wrap this up. Friends, be sure to like the video if you liked it. Dislike if you disliked it. Consider subscribing if you're new. Enable those notifications and you'll never miss another chicken setting video ever again. I hope you all enjoyed this experience. And I'll be seeing you all in the next one.